Let's take a look at this one. A plant hormone that promotes female flowers in cucumber. See children, this is a very important question. Is it A, 2,4 D? It's a type of an auxin which is used as a weed side. B, ethylene. C, NAA, that is naphthalene acetic acid or D, abscessic acid. So which is the one children which promotes uh, a female flowers in cucumber? And the answer is option B, ethylene. Okay, so let's just sum this answer up children. See, ethylene promotes flowers in cucumber. Can you see how pretty they look? And see how ethylene is with a double bond between the carbon atoms. Okay, now further, ethylene is a simple gaseous natural plant growth hormone. Okay, so it's promoting uh, uh, flowers here. It, please note, it also has some inhibitory activities. However, in cucumber, uh, what it does is cucumber has a separate male and female flower. Ethylene increases the number of female flowers in cucumber and therefore increases the yield. So you can also get this question as which of the following hormones can be used for increasing the yield in cucumber. Okay. So you need to know it is again going to be ethylene. So same question or rather the same uh, hormone can be asked for uh, two different questions. Okay. Keep that in mind. Note it down and uh, make sure you remember what the function of ethylene is associated with. That's it. Okay, time to pick the correct statements, children. Which of the following statements regarding ethylene is or are correct? So, we are going to pick it one by one, all right? First one, ethylene influences the growth of seeds and seedlings. Two, it helps in breaking the dormancy of seeds. Three, it promotes the formation of apical hook in dicots, germination and horizontal growth in seedlings. So, how many statements are or which of the statements are correct here children? Let's see. You've got these options in front of you, okay? But before we go into this option, what I want you people to do is just take a look at this flowchart and would, I would also strongly suggest for you people to make a note of the flowchart and we'll come back to these options, okay? Here, take a look at this. So, when you talk about the effects of ethylene children, Look at the effect it has on seed, shoot, root, flower, fruits and other organs. So, it has got a many multiple area of functioning. Now, in case of seeds, what is it doing? It breaks dormancy, initiates germination, horizontal growth of the seedlings, swelling of the embryonic axis. That's the axis which is, you know, the embryo uh, has, which you will have the root in the shoot demarcation eventually. Apical hook formation. So, all these are the functions which are brought about by ethylene in seed uh, or seeds. Alright. Now, further look at this. It will also make sure that the dormancy, if the seed is dormant in, in simple terms, uh, the seed is on a vacation. No matter how much of water or food you give it, how much of good, good soil you give it, it refuses to come out. It refuses to germinate. So, that kind of a seed is dormant. So, in simple terms, it's not growing. Now, that seed, when it is treated with ethylene, it can also help break dormancy. Okay. So, what's the answer, children? Let's go back to them and let's discuss that again. You had what? Ethylene influences the growth of seed and seedlings. Yes, it is. Yeah. Then it helps in breaking dormancy of seeds. Yes, it is helping. And then it promotes the formation of apical hook in dicots. Germination and horizontal growth of seedlings? Yes, it is. So, technically, what is the correct answer? 1, 2 and 3 are all correct statements. Okay. So, let's sum this answer up now, children. Here we go. Ethylene plays several roles in growth of seeds and seedlings. It breaks seed dormancy, makes the seed ready for germination. It also stimulates germination along with gibberellin in some seeds okay like peanut ethylene also promotes the seedlings horizontal growth okay and causes an increase in the girth of the seedling please note them all down in dicot seedlings the tip of the shoot is usually bent like a hook yeah now that is what is called as apical hook now the hook prevents the damage of the growing tip because if it's going up uh, breaking the soil and coming out it is going to show a uh, damage to the tip because of the friction and all okay so the hook prevents the damage to the growing tip when it is trying to push up through the soil ethylene promotes the development of this apical hook 
in the seed and seedlings. Interesting, isn't it? So please note them down. What I would do is just take a look at this chart again, note it down again if in case you have forgotten or missed any points. Respiratory climactic, children. What is respiratory climactic? It is that effect brought about by ethylene where there is an increase in the rate of respiration during uh, ripening of fruits. Okay. See, because you know that ripening of fruit is brought about by which hormone? Ethylene. And towards this ripening process, towards this, you know, uh, you cannot say ending process, but as the process of ripening is at its peak, the level of ethylene. Uh, increases the rate of respiration and it brings about a lot of changes. The term respiratory was added because of this very reason. Okay. So now, which fruits? Okay. So respiratory climactic is found in which fruits? Tomatoes, A tomatoes, B bananas, C melons or D all of the above. Now children, all of them will show you this particular effect thanks to ethylene. All right. So, we'll just get few more information about that since we are talking about respiratory climactic. Look here. During the ripening of fruits, there is an event which you call as respiratory climactic where the rate of respiration is really high thanks to ethylene. Now, this is found in certain fruits. It, you will see in some fruits, they will be showing the change in color. And during this time, there will be a lot of sugar which will be released and the fruit will taste really, really sweet as well. All right. Please do keep that in mind. It's very, very important. You need to know all the changes. So what will you expect in, during respiratory climactic? Rate of respiration will be high. It will taste very, very sweet. The, it, there will be a change in the color of the fruit also. Okay. Let's sum this all up now, children. Ethylene is a natural product of metabolism. Natural ripening of fruits. Now, in the plants, it enhances the respiration rate during the ripening of fruits. Now, this rise in the rate of respiration is what you call as respiratory climactic. All right. Now, the respiratory climactic is found in fruits like apple, banana, melon, tomato, etc. All right. Keep a note of it. This is a very important question. An assertion and reasoning question, children. How are you going to approach an assertion reasoning question? See, the moment you look at an assertion reasoning question, please observe the statements individually first and first find out whether they are both correct or not. And then you go in for the second step of understanding whether the reason is the correct explanation for the assertion given or not. Okay. So just don't try to patch them up immediately. You will waste time because see, think about it. If both the statements are wrong, you save yourself so much of time for thinking whether it is matching or not. Isn't it? So be wise, be very quick when you're uh, going through MCQ questions. Okay, let's start with this. Assertion. Ethylene indirectly reduces water absorption in plants. No, it does not. It prevents the formation of root hair. Reason says that it prevents the formation of root hair and that's how it uh, is able to take care of the other thing. No, it does not. In fact, what it does is it promotes it. So, this got automatically saves your time for understanding and thinking whether the reason is the correct explanation or not. Isn't it? So, what's the answer children? Only A is correct. Both A and R are incorrect. Option number D. Okay. Now, let's see this. When you take a look at the functions of ethylene children, ethylene in roots will show you root growth and root hair formation. Oh, so, so, it promotes it. It doesn't inhibit it. Are you getting it? Now, how does it do it? Will we see? How does it help in water absorption, children? Promotes root hair formation. And when the root hair is formed, this root hair is going to absorb water because that's what its function is. And thereby promoting, not reducing. It helps in absorption of water. Easy? So let's just discuss this and sum this up. Ethylene promotes the growth of roots and also increases formation of root hair. What are root hair? Root hairs are tiny hair-like structures present on the roots which increase the surface area of the root. Now, because of the increased surface area of the root, water absorption of the plant will also increase, not decrease. Bo hence, both assertion and reasoning are incorrect. Easy? Just remember the function. It will be very, very easy. Okay, let's try this one now, children. Which of the following statement or statements concerning ethophon is or are true? True. Please pay attention. True. Okay, that's why children make a lot of mistake when they overlook true, not true, 
not false. So they, that, that confusion, please make sure you read that very well. So we are talking about which are true. One, it is commercially used to ripen fruits. See children, ethophon, yes, it is, you know, uh, something which is used for, uh, what does ethylene do? It naturally ripens the fruit. And ethophon, it's not natural, but it's the one which is used and it's like synthetically prepared. So it is used for ripening fruits. So this is correct. Again, it is a source of ethylene. Yes, ethophon is used as a source of ethylene. So statement number two is also correct. Third, plants can easily absorb and transport ethophon in a solution. Absolutely, yes. That's that's one of the biggest advantage of ethophon. Okay. So how many statements are true here? Let's pick the option. Is it only one? Is it one and two? Two and three? Or option number D? One, two and three. Okay. So let's just discuss this now, children. Here we go. See, when you talk about ripening of fruits, when you want to ripen the fruits, you know, commercially, when you, you want to ripen it, you use ethophon. That's what it is used for. Okay. Can you see that? Look at this. On day one, how it's ripening? Day three, the day four, and then day five. Yeah, so it's, it's, when you want to commercially ripen it, it is ethophon which is the best one used. Now, other than that, ethophon, yes, it is a source of ethylene and the plant converts ethophon to ethylene and then gets uh, ripened because ethylene is going to actually bring about that, uh, that effect for the fruit. Now, let's just sum this up. Ethophon is the most widely used commercial source of ethylene. It hastens or fastens fruit ripening and accelerates abscission. What is abscission? Shedding off or separation. Like it's the natural shedding off or the separation of the flu, fruit, flower or the leaf from the plant body. Ethylene is a gas and is difficult to use commercially. That's, now you know it. We can't get ethylene directly because it's really, it's a gas. Now ethophon, on the other hand, you can use it in a solution. Ethophon is solid and can easily be used in a solution. Plants can easily absorb and transport ethophon in solution. They convert it to ethylene and release it slowly, thereby showing ripening. Easy? Please remember this. It's a very important, very, very important uh, information.